Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from MTR. Woman gets exposed after man demands a DNA test. Yes. Please like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's give that chow. It's Chow Time. I'm over here in the hospital, y'all. I'm finna give birth to his child. And he over here questioning me, talking about, is this really his baby? Like, what are you talking about? Do you really think I'm sitting here happy over here at the hospital and everything with me just for nothing? Are you serious right now? What kind of baby dad does that right when... We finna have this baby. Like, are you serious? You really gonna sit here and question baby talking about, oh, can you get DNA test? No, you're not getting no DNA test after this. I'm not doing that. This is your child. If you don't believe it's your child, then you can go ahead and go. I don't need you up here. Because all you're doing is stressing me out. Yeah, we get up and go, bro. And that's so weird for you to even be saying that, though. Why would you even say that? You don't never want to claim your kids. Why you never claiming your kids? Like, I don't even be, I don't be doing none of that cheating stuff or none of that. What, like, what are you doing, bro? Like, I'm, t I'm sick of that. And you know what? I'm not even going to say nothing, bro, because I'm not getting no DNA test. So if it, he don't think it's his child, he just won't have a child. We don't, we don't really need you over here. It probably ain't his child, so it's fine. He in here stressing me out. Like, look at me. I look a mess right now. And you over here doing all this extra stuff, stressing me out right now. Talking about you and DNA test. Okay. You gonna get the DNA test. You can really go ahead and go. If men can never be seen as victims, doesn't that actually make them the biggest victims? It actually does. That's crazy. I never thought of it like that. They are one of the biggest victims if you're honestly thinking about it. Why do people act like women are so empathetic if women don't have any empathy for men as victims? Because some women don't understand why men, some men can be like that. And uh, some women do have empathy, but some of them don't. They only have the empathy to the point where they want to feel something or they want to make them feel something to the point where, oh, I, okay, I made them feel good. Now I can get what I want out of it. A, a lot of women are manipulative. And I'm not just going to say as women, a lot of people are manipulative. But um, I think there are a lot of evil people that, that like to do uh, false victimize themselves for attention or money or whatever the case may be. But with men, we don't we don't really speak up as as much as we should when we're when we're victimized so conservative this is this is what's going on with the diddy stuff a lot of the victims a lot of the people that had to go through this meat grinder in a sense literally are not speaking up they're scared to speak up because they're men families have less depressed kids is that what you're saying Apparently, boys from depre from conservative fam sorry boys from liberal families have higher anxiety rates than girls from conservative families. But above, like, mm. if you just looked That's at the norm, more girls generally yes. have anxiety. Right. But in conservative families, girls are less anxious than boys from liberal families. That's right. Boys raised in liberal families get more of the short end of the stick. Not only are women and girls issues more dominant in society, thus impacting both liberal families and conservative families, but liberal ideology is much less structured, such as the meanings of words and hierarchies and moral codes within society. And let's also not forget about the focus on selling ideas through being a victim. All of mm. this is anti-masculine male, and I'd argue that a degree of our purpose is achieved by attaining and residing well within our masculinity. Men gain status through being highly capable and productive within a society. So when a boy is raised in a free flowing, unframed work, liberal environment, they do not get the advantages of structure or discipline. Why do girls- This is actually pretty true, right? Comparing my myself to my brother. My brother and I are 11 years apart. I came, I grew up in Cambodia, came up here when I was five, and as I grew up with my family, my, my parents were super conservative. My whole family was super conservative when I first came to this country. And as they got older and as, you know, they got a little bit more Americanized, they became a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more slightly liberal in a sense. I wouldn't say liberal, but they were more allowing of bad behavior in a sense. And my brother didn't really get too much you shouldn't be doing this or you have to do these things my brother actually got his room cleaned by my mom and dad all the time my mom and dad did his laundry all the time for him as i was growing up i had to do all of that myself 
I also did it for my brothers and sisters and I did it for my family. I literally did laundry for the whole family. But as my brother grew up and I like left the house, it was different for him. When he grew up, he was fully taken care of by my parents, and my mom and dad. And now when you look at him and look at me, we are so different people. He is, I want to say, a little bit weaker than me in a sense, morally and everything, because he doesn't really want to strive for anything he just kind of wants to live in his room and just play video games all day and doesn't want to do anything he doesn't even really want to help the family out as much it's just so different even within the same household the same family from the oldest to the youngest you see from how conservative happens to liberal happens and my brother is super anxious he's super worried about everything he's just like so in his mind about things for, for me, I just, I need to get shit done. It doesn't matter what the fuck my, is in my mind right now. I need to get this shit done. I'm going to go do it and get it done. Girls actually like toxic relationships. This guy's not as angry as he should be. When girls want you to be toxic, you cannot respond like this. You have to respond with positive toxicity. Let me explain. So on zones, I split women's needs up into good guy stuff and bad boy stuff. This guy is giving her only good guy stuff. And if you do that, she's not going to get excited. This is where all the X's are. So if you're only nice to girls, then this is their reaction. And if you are a little devilish, then this is their reaction. <laughs> now, being a bad boy doesn't mean being bad. It means being cool. It means doing badass things. In Game of Thrones, there's this one scene where the dragon princess is with the desert people or whatever, and they're having a big rowdy party, and there's one desert girl who I think is not wearing very much, and then there's a desert guy, and he goes, I, I like this, and so I am going to take it. And then there's another desert guy who goes, hang on a second, I would like to have this girl, so now I'm going to stop you. And then one of them cuts the other one open and he dies. So what does the desert girl think about this? Is she horrified? No, she goes, that was awesome. You can totally have me now. I also went over this with lions. When one male lion challenges another, the female lions just sit there and watch, just like, who's it gonna be? They are probably enjoying watching these guys face off. And then they like the one who is stronger, the winner. So when you get a girlfriend and you only do nice things in front of her, she gets bored. You have to do manly things to trigger her this stuff. And you have to do it without cutting anyone's guts out. So it's unfortunate that we call these things toxic. They're not toxic. They're healthy. You don't have to be bad to make her excited, but you do have to make her excited. So you're only doing these good guy things and then you're wondering why she doesn't feel this way. We have a harder task than previous generations of men. Women from previous times used to just feel like, well, he's nice and that's all I need, but today's women need to feel excitement. You can't just go out and do things like this, but it does help to make her feel like you would if you had to. There's a whole big <laughs> list of things to do here to make her feel like you're fighting for her. Be powerful, exhibit leadership. If you go out and someone looks at her, make sure she knows she's yours. You don't have to do anything bad, but she should feel like you are fighting for her and winning. You cannot just stay at home and watch movies and go, wasn't that nice? It does not work that way. Hi, Hi I'm Bjork. Jimmy, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Because I was bullied in a elementary school. One time I just saw this as a <laughs> That was so mean. He just told me like such a deep thing. And I just nested him so hard. And you're laughing at him. Women like this are repulsed by your weakness. They sniff it out like a shark sniffs out blood in the water. So yes, she's an asshole. I get it. But you don't talk about how weak that you were in front of women ever. They're not designed biologically to have sympathy for you, no. especially just as they meet you. They are subconsciously testing out your masculinity to determine if you're a suitable option. Can he protect me? They typically hide this in their mating strategy, but in the context of the game, she feels empowered to tell the truth. Why? Mm. Because the social norms are removed in this game. And what we get as a result is her exposing the female selection process in real time. Damn right. Who is the boss of your house? I'm the boss. What do you think? You're his wife, are you? <laughs> what did you say? I said, who is the boss? My what? husband. What is your nationality? Greek. I'm Greek. Is it always that way in Greek households? The husband is the boss? Yes. 
So do women, the wives, have anything to say about it? No. <laughs> you get so upset about women demanding equality. It's not feminine. They, they, they want to be equal with the men. Well, it's not meant to be. They're, they're completely different. Their emotions, yeah, yeah, and the way they're built. I mean, you just, you yep. just can't put them on. You put equal terms with a man. So it's crazy that they knew this back in the seventies. <laughs> we just reverted to complete inner anarchy in modern day. You actually feel that woman is not equal to man? Right? No, no, and I don't think she, she ever will be. If she was enough love. Your slippers are nice and warm. Get them by the fire. Hey! Nice girl. Okay. That's a cute cat. Uh, oh, I think, I think you like that one. It's oh, really nice. They're out to teach women how to be feminine again. And judging from the letters they've been receiving, it looks as if what started as a modest little club among friends may develop into a national or even international movement. Anti-feminist. With us doing this, we get treated better by our husbands. Mm. They think more of us, they do the little niceties for us that exactly. probably they wouldn't have thought about. It's called appreciation. When you show us appreciation, we show it straight back in many ways. So this is what manly life's all about. I might even try it myself. Wine. All right, all right, I'll admit, I was all with this video. <laughs> what the fuck happened in the last part? Said wine. I think idealistically, every man would want that. The man snapping and saying wine is the modern day equivalent to these women saying that they don't need no man. Nevertheless, I think it's so interesting right. how back in the 70s, they saw the issue with the forthcoming modern day feminism and this that hadn't even reached fourth wave feminism yet which is the most egregious of the four waves but it's also interesting to note that this was a failure because if they succeeded then we would not be experiencing feminism the way that we do today vegans will combine 10 carcinogens with 50 industrial chemicals to make food instead of just having steak it's the largest holocaust in history with three trillion individuals brutally murdered every year. Whoa, wait, what? There's not even... There's only like seven trillion people. Or is it even in billions? There's not even trillions yet. What the fuck is she talking about? Uh, just You've never visited my place. How do you know? Because if you had, you'd know that you're talking a load of shit. And what animals... Do you find I run a goat dairy. Now, for a start, we don't rape our animals. Yes, you use euphemisms such as artificial insemination, which I is I don't great. use artificial insemination. I run my bucks with my herd. My bucks get the girls when the girls are in season. Book learning versus reality. And only then. And it's their choice. Nature's choice. We allow our kids to stay on their mother. We only take the excess milk. So you're talking a load of shit. Mic drop. But you're making profit from animals, right? You're, making, they're commodities am, to you. No, you, you're, you I have sell their milk them. so that they can get food. Mm. They get fed. They get fed better than I do. Because our argument here is that no, your be argument, your argument, in the first your place argument. To be your argument has modified. nothing to do with exactly what I do. Imagine stopping your day of production to sit down and have a conversation with a snowflake. This is what happens when you over domesticate the world or you over civilize the world. You get this rise of victimhood, which really is encapsulated in true and utter privilege, questioning those that continue to help push and run society forward. And one must think, has a woke woman like this actually sat down and watched a nature biography? Those goats are living far more peacefully than if they were out in the wild. Don't you get that? Shout out to MTR. I think it's funny. When have you ever really seen wild cows, right? <laughs> you don't really see so many wild certain animals. Why? Because we domesticated them all or a good chunk of them for eating. So there really isn't wild cows out there. <laughs> we raised them all. We took care of most of the cows and the bovines out there, even buffaloes. So they wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for us. Please thanks for down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.